Hi American, this is not really my story. I think a lot of it starts, as most stories start, very normally. Grew up with good Christian parents, I had brothers and sisters, I had normal friends, I had normal everything. You know, my story gets a little more interesting as I got a little older. It kind of starts when me and my now wife, Beth, met. Uh, I was 14 and I think she was 15 at the time. You know, I thought I met this special person and it was really easy for us to go too far. And Tyler was the result. But I wasn't in good shape. Uh, you know, I just felt guilty and I, I, I was drinking a lot and I started smoking. And I think when I was 18, I ended up doing 30 days in a rehab facility because life had gotten a little out of hand. I didn't know what God could do for me. I knew God was alive. I had, I had seen him. But I'd wait until I hit the bottom with um, alcohol or hit the bottom with suicidal depression. But that's when I'd ask God to change my life is when I was uh, totally miserable. I was a mess. You know, I think she, in a lot of ways she was a mess too. And um, we just knew though that, 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 that there was still a draw. There was still something going on that, you know, kept drawing us back together. Me and Beth got married when I was 20. Uh, Abby was born a few months later. Emily, a couple years after that. We thought we had tried all of the odds. We thought we had made it. We thought we were it. But something was still wrong as a whole, something that was just not there. When I was 28, you know, we had some life-changing stuff happen. And what had happened was, um, you know, I had made kind of a nasty comment to my wife, and she just kind of had a meltdown of, of uh, guilt and remorse. She just made this comment like, you know, you have no idea what I've done, you have no idea what I've done. She started to confess being raped as an eight or nine year old multiple times. She had never told anybody. Um, she had never wanted to tell anybody. You know, we didn't know what to do with it. She was confused. She was hurt. She didn't know, you know, how I was inside. I didn't know how she was inside. But the neat thing was, it, it for the first time ever, it led us to intimately pray together for each other and with each other. And, you know, I all of a sudden, you know, really loved her more than ever. And I think in that week, you know, something really started. Because then it's, it's when we started to change on the inside. After that time of prayer, life on that outside didn't change drastically at all. But on the inside, we started to be different. And you know, with, with, those, with those slow changes, we started to shift very subtly the way we saw things, the way we thought about things. But those little heart shifts, um, they make you parent differently. They make you a different husband or wife. They make you a different friend. They make you a different person. You know, it's just another one of those times where you look back and it's so obvious that God had his hand on you the whole time and he just carries you the whole time. So I was diagnosed with leukemia two weeks ago. I had no fear, I had total peace, I had um, this excitement of knowing God was going to be there and knowing I was going to have to rely on Him and just um, so amazed that He would go through this stuff with me. And I think a lot of people still don't get to enjoy the full potential of how awesome God is because we're so worried about the stuff of this earth. And it's just scary now looking back that you know, I lived that way for 28 years, not having enough faith to trust any part of my life to Him. 
It's so easy to have faith and, and say that God is good, but it's so hard to throw yourself out there and let God be good. I've seen God work in so many ways through this leukemia already. It's almost too much for me to handle. It almost brings me to tears how good God's been. And we don't know where this ends. We don't know if, you know, I get better. We don't know if, um, you know, eventually this takes my life. We just know God's going to use it somehow because this is crazy and it's so obviously God's story.